Uh, it's great to be uh, presenting. We're, we're really surrounded by Nasuni partners today on this conference. Um, we just announced a strong partnership with Google, but we've been partnering with AWS and Microsoft Azure um, since our inception. And as Ron said, we're essentially a cloud file storage uh, solution. We provide primary file storage, uh, backup, DR, file sharing, uh, and all of these leverage the cloud to offer kind of a um, limitless uh, cloud file storage environment for our customers. And um, just to differentiate, you know, our we're, what we mean by files um, from some of the conversations we've been having a little bit earlier this afternoon, you know, our focus is on what we call, you know, enterprise um, files where department shares, um, organizational shares, project shares reside. Uh, so we're, we're not really focused on OneDrive or SharePoint. We're not really focused on the high performance computing end of the spectrum, but everything in between where so much intellectual property exists and so much business design effort exists is where we focus our file storage protection and sharing capabilities. And, um, you know, if you look at if you look at the research, um, all of this data is some, you know, doubling it really uh, growing at like a double digit rate, essentially, because of multimedia, uh, because of very sophisticated modeling software, um, just incredible applications out there that are generating files that are as you know a gigabyte or larger each, and our our customers are all concerned about um, affordably storing these files um, and accessing them. Uh, but now, over the last um, couple of years, with increasing sensitivity, uh, protecting them from ransomware. Uh, what we've seen across our customer base, we have over 500 uh, customers who are keep over 100 petabytes with us, is ransomware attacks was a once a quarter type thing we'd hear about from our customers. Uh, but now a couple of times a week, we're getting calls from customers that need, that have experienced an attack. So as uh, Ron said, I'm here to talk about the other side. I, I hope if you, if you implement all the architectures we've been learning about earlier today, um, you never have to experience a ransomware attack, but if you do, I'm gonna talk about how to think about recovering from one and how our solution can play a role in that. And I'm gonna give you some reasons why it's important to think a little bit differently about ransomware recovery than typical disaster recovery um, and backup. So uh, trends that we've seen in our customer base, obviously everybody's mentioned this, COVID increasing attacks, um, but also unfortunately, you know, ransomware as a service. So bad actors employing other bad actors to go out and attack their competition or governments attacking um, enterprises, you know, across international boundaries. Um, probably the most concerning thing is that about 4% of the bad actors who take money from uh, companies and uh, you know promise to re restore their files don't do that, and that number I think is growing. It's I think it's on its way up. So even if you pay, um, you are in trouble because you may not get your files back. Uh, the U.S. government has really changed its position on ransomware, and now there are penalties for companies that pay uh, without informing the government. Um, you, the SEC is involved, Homeland Security is involved. If you're hit by a ransomware attack, you know you have to report it. Uh, so the the government really is discouraging companies from paying. And so where does that leave you? Where does that leave you? What if, what if you're attacked and your files are locked up uh, and you need them back immediately? Um, so it's great that we're talking about prevention, but what I'm going to focus on is uh, after you've been attacked, you know, what, let's talk about recovery and let's talk about mitigating that damage. So typically, you know, a backup coverage, which is what most people, a lot of companies default to after an attack, you know, there's a lot of data that's backed up, but there's some data across a company that's not backed up. So let's look at the big picture here. You've got all your file data out there and companies make conscious decisions every day not to back up some of it. But within the backed up data um, spectrum, you know, you have remote systems, you have um, closer in systems, maybe with your headquarters or your departments where you're doing a weekly backup. Uh, and uh, that's a full backup and a daily backup, probably an incremental backup um, on a daily basis. 
Um, if you have a very active environment with lots of production data, you might be doing um, backup even more frequently. And then, of course, you have your data that's being worked on right now by your by your uh, workers. And uh, let's look at this full spectrum because a ransomware attack can hit all of these, as everybody knows. It can hit data that you're not backing up. It can hit data at remote systems. Unfortunately, the sophistication of these, um, you know, malware is now that it can creep up into your backed up files, not just your existing files that are actively being used but uh, we're seeing that it can creep up into your backup systems. And so that's where the problem is. Of course, there is a portion of your data that's safe, which is um, data that you put on a tape and shipped off to a mountain somewhere, but that's probably not likely to be you know, production data that you're using you know, on a daily basis. So this is the problem. Um, now, if, a ransomware attack, you know, hits your production data. Obviously, you're gonna you're gonna use product you're gonna use um, lose productivity. Um, with a traditional backup environment, uh, the question is, what's considered production data? You know, is it stuff that you're working on every week? Is it stuff that you're working on every day? Is it stuff that's over the course of a week? Is getting a full backup? Um, with a traditional backup solution, you have this you have this sort of um, just different increments of, of backup taking place, and you've got to decide which one is the most important. Um, with the cloud file architecture that Nasuni um, includes, we have a global file system where changes are being transmitted to the cloud continuously, um, pretty much at five minute incremals, incremals across that up to the cloud. So you're not forced into choosing which window you want to restore as much. And um, of course, you might say, well, that's a lot of data if you're constantly, um, you know, continuously backing up changes to it. And the answer is yes, it is. But that's the beauty of the cloud is there's no scalability issue. And you can basically record and back up as many versions of a particular file as you want to. Restoring data for a production environment, here's where the problem is. People maybe changed files three or four hours ago, but a backup might only deliver a restored copy of that file from yesterday or from last night. And it can take hours. And in some cases, it can take a day or two to restore files even at that level of granularity. So there's a huge amount of productivity, one or two days that can get lost uh, by just using your typical backup for your production systems. The second level of complexity is really around the fact that a lot of um, work that's being done these days, is, as we especially know during COVID, is you know, across multiple sites. We're all working from home, we're collaborating. Um, I might be working in Boston, someone else might be working in the West Coast, we might be working on a file together, we're creating something for a client. So those remote sites that um, are vulnerable to attack as well, if they go down, you've lost that collaboration capability. You've lost that ability to um, you know, keep a team productive. And uh, with traditional backup systems, you can have completely different systems across multiple sites. You can have different personnel, different procedures, you can have different software, and they might even have different restore times. Um, so you might say, well, what about cloud backup? Well, cloud backup can work, um, again, provided the increments are granular enough, but many solutions require that you do it sequentially. So that can take multiple hours or even days to back up from a cloud backup solution. Uh, what we've tried to do with Nasuni is, is solve all of this at once with one single gold copy that's in Azure, it's in Google, or it's in AWS, or it's in, um, you know, uh, the VMware's cloud solution as well. We work with them. And that gold copy is always available to anybody that needs it across multiple sites. And when you when you come back to restore, which is really where the problem is, um, everybody's working off that single gold copy. And you can do multiple restores to multiple sites all at once. You don't have to do it sequentially. A backup plan for companies, and many companies have backup plans, and they 
uh, you know, review them on a quarterly basis and they do all the right things, but the, it's not the same as a ransomware plan. Knowing that you have coverage um, to back up your files, like I said, on a weekly or daily basis is a really, really good thing and it's really essential. But ransomware strikes at random and you never know where it's gonna hit and you never know uh, how extensive it's gonna be. And once the attack starts, as we all know, you've got to get your arms around it very quickly and try to shut it down as quickly as possible. So the impact of ransomware, unfortunately, is chaos. Um, traditional backup procedures are um, you know, designed to be sort of spawned independently at individual sites based on a specific incident, but ransomware might strike multiple sites at once. So what we've tried to do with this, with the cloud file storage approach is give you one process that lets you foil, um, start restoring your files immediately and the same way across multiple locations. One process, files start restore. Before you do that, of course, you've got to shut down and figure out where the attack has happened. You've got to stop the attack and you've got to figure out the scope. But once you've taken those steps, the idea is that the recovery can be simultaneous across multiple locations and it's one procedure that you're following so that everybody gets back to the same kind of restore point. It's really, really important to develop a ransomware attack plan, a kind of playbook that says immediately, as soon as there's an attack, everybody's put on notice, everybody shuts everything down and starts containing the damage. And once the extent of that damage is returned, it's really, really important to have a recovery process that's uniform and uh, can take everybody back to a known point, or you can have uh, data chaos, which is almost as bad as the attack itself. So um, we, we're getting to the last uh, couple of points about traditional backup and, and how a cloud file solution is sort of different. A big, big problem that our customers come to us uh, over and over with is um, they cannot guarantee their end users a predictable recovery point. So they can't guarantee that if something's lost, they'll get them back to within 12 hours or six hours or 18 hours of when the last file change happened. Why is that? Because the file restore process is variable um, or they're using a technology that's um, too slow. The bandwidth for the restoration is too constrained. And so there's a lot of problems restoring those files that people maybe have not um, experienced until they're in a situation like a ransomware attack when people want their data back immediately. So that uncertainty about how quick is it gonna to be to you know, restore our files results in overspending on a lot of um, you know, super fast backup and restore solutions or underspending um, because people don't realize the extent of the problem. There's just a lot of variability out there in terms of restore timeframes. So um, with, a, with a cloud file solution, again, we're leveraging the power of the clouds, like you know, VMware, AWS, and leveraging the power of the cloud to um, keep incremental copies to within a few minutes of the, of the attack itself available. And this allows our, um, our customers to set um, a service level agreement with their end users and to actually create a predictable RTO and an RPO and to get as granular as they want to get within five minutes, it could be 30 minutes, it could be two hours, whatever commitment they want to make to their organization, the cloud can, the, ca the cloud versioning that we've stored um, for them allows them to restore to that point. And like I said, do that fairly quickly. So the recovery can be very quick and um, they can tell their end users, we'll have you back up and running to this point of data currency um, in this time frame. A, a frequent, you know, concern with the with the cloud and with, um, you know, ransomware and backup in general is uh, because you have these viruses attacking. Um, what, how can you thoroughly prevent them from, you know, corrupting files? And of course, it's essential that the files be put in an immutable format uh, and they be encrypted. And that's a key element of the whole Nasuni sort of security um, architecture. Um, if the, if the malware can get to a changeable file format, that's bad news. Uh, you can't necessarily get that with, you know, on-disk backup and with some cloud solutions, you've got to have an architecture that provides an immutable 
file format. Um, so once it's recorded, that's it. Nothing is going to be allowed to change that. Um, and with the help of our cloud partners, we're also able to offer, you know, geo redundancy and further encryption. That uh, means that in addition to our encrypting and worm formatting the actual file in Nisuni, um, they add these extra layers of protection. Um, so it's very it's very important that whatever file backup solution is being used, it's going to an immutable format, which previously was really only available by putting tapes in a mountain somewhere. But now with some of these, you know, with the cloud solution like we offer and some other alternatives, you can get that. Okay. So um, I wanted to just wrap up by saying a cloud file storage approach bridges the requirements gap between wanting that local access and that fast um, basic, you know, file uh, sharing capability and the cloud scalability. And this is the architecture that Nasuni is leveraging um, using the, the power of the cloud. We've got all of this capacity, unlimited capacity in terms of number of files, in terms of revisions of files. And then we use uh, edge appliances or virtual machines uh, in the cloud or locally to deliver the fast performance. And along through this entire path, we've got encryption going on and we've got continuous versioning going on, which is where the protection from ransomware enters in. This is just a very simple view of the architecture here. And ultimately, if you have a system like this in place, it just means a faster return to productivity. The, the back end of ransomware is not pretty. It's, it's a horrible situation to be in. We don't want it for any of our customers, but we have that helped many, many customers recover quickly um, with the ability to restore their files to within a shorter period of time than they might have been able to with traditional backup and to do that entire recovery in a very quick period of time. It's really, really imp important. And the impact on productivity has been minimized by taking this approach. Um, and of course, do dollars lost and time lost has been minimized by taking this approach. And using the cloud, we'll also you know, leverage that for disaster recovery um, and um, you know, traditional backup and restores. It's very difficult to get customers to talk about um, ransomware uh, publicly, but uh, we have a number of customers that will talk privately about their ability to recover uh, and, and basically come back to life, if you will, after a, an attack. And uh, we, we believe that basically it's important to think about once it happens, what do I do? So in summary, what to look for um, if you want a ransomware mitigation solution, try to look for one solution across that will help you restore multiple sites at once because that's the way attacks are taking place these days. Try to look for a solution that will get give you a predictable recovery point and a predictable time objective. Try to look for a solution that you can test and try ahead of time because once a, an attack breaks out, it, it's chaos. Uh, and certainly practice uh, the recovery, you know, um, procedures the same way that a backup test should be done. And try to look for a solution that stores the files in an immutable way, uh, because that's your real protection and something that's continuously monitoring your data because uh, otherwise you're forced into those backup windows and that lack of granularity that traditional backup um, offers and your productivity is going to be impacted kind of on the back end. 